Hello, Earthlings. This is Tom from tdjacobs.com. I'm also on the web at healingsuicide.com. Most of my work, uh, including all services and courses, are, are tdjacobs.com. And the other side is a message on soul and and uh, how it relates to its human lives and how to deal with some emotions that can make us feel like life isn't worth living. So definitely check out healingsuicide.com. But if you want to get through to me and consume services and participate in my workshop and my world, um, yeah, tdjacobs.com. So this video um, is a, about my approach to Pluto, which is unique even in evolutionary astrology. And if you know um, about astrologies approaches, you know that evolutionary astrology is a, is a corner. You know, it's kind of a niche area and I'm kind of in a corner of that corner. And I'm working really hard to present positive definitions of Pluto, but also processes to help you work through these issues that understandably have a horrible reputation. Well, Pluto is going to transit your sun next year. Mm, you know, there's all this like doom and gloom. And it does bring up difficult things that can be the worst feelings that humans can have. But there are also ways to be empowered in working through those things. So, and I am planning the, um, and recruiting for the uh, Pluto Healing Intensive webinar which starts on August 20th, and I'll put the link in the description of the video. Uh, but this is just to give you an idea of a, of a couple of things here. I have to define some terms, but let me go with the title of the video first. All Plutonian people need to be witnessed. When I first thought of this and thought of doing a video on it, the phrase was, all Plutonian people need a witness. And then I realized when we deal with Plutonian issues, which again can be the deepest things that humans can experience and go through, uh, deeper feelings plus judgments of self and beliefs about self or the world that are, have a lot to do with disempowerment or you know, resulting from abusive issues or um, things that cause us to feel guilt and shame or you know, all the list of terrible Plutonian keywords we can add in there. Um, but I realized, yeah, when we go through that stuff, sometimes we, as Plutonian people and or people having a phase of the Plutonian experience during their lives, we do look for somebody trustworthy. We kind of feel like we need a connection. And I've been thinking about that. And where does that come from? And, and it comes from the need to know that we're not nuts. I feel this thing so strongly, it scares me. Do you know what I mean? Like that's a version of plutonium validation. Or I was so hurt by this experience that I wanted to hurt the other person. Do you know what I mean? And so I wanted to find some terms, what validation can mean in these plutonium contexts. And it's, well, I had somebody recently ask me about I'm not laughing at the person, I'm just laughing because yeah, I need to define some terms. But somebody asked me, how do you define compassion? Person heard me talking on a summit call or interview recently. And I'm, so I'm just thinking about terms anyway. Um, but the validation isn't saying whatever you did when you were so hurt that you lashed out is fine. Validation isn't saying, yeah, you're angry, go destroy stuff. Validation in, in Tom's workshop or Jehudi's workshop, they send a Bastard channel, is um, okay, so that is what you're feeling. Like witnessing the truth of what you're actually experiencing. Of course, you don't want really in your core to act from destructive feelings. Of course, you don't want to, so you don't have to. So, validation is the key to this. Because if I'm feeling something so deeply and nobody gets it, I'm going to feel alone. Then I'm going to think something might be wrong with me. And I either, you know, perceive I lose importance because, well, I'm the only one who feels this terrible thing. Or I might get kind of messed up and over inflate the importance of what I'm feeling. Like I have to act out and everybody has to know, blah, 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 blah. And I perceive that's part of the problem with gun violence in the US, that's part of it. Anyway, but I also do like comedian, his name is Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show and elsewhere. But 
uh, I saw a segment of his a few months ago, and I've been looking it up and can't find it on YouTube because uh, I want to share it with everybody. And it was right after the, I thought it was right after the Uvalde shooting in Texas here in the U.S. And, and he said something like, you know, I'm not, I'm not into federal funding to ban the guns, but there should be, but we should have a law funding friends for lonely white guys, <laughs> which was very poignant, in fact. Anyway, so the sense of validation, feeling validated and how you might feel disempowered. Again, it's not saying do whatever you want. It's not free license to be destructive or hurtful to others. And that's where I bring in, if you've worked with me, you, you probably heard this, um, that here in Jehudi's workshop and Tom's workshop, uh, I always think of like Santa's workshop with the image of little elves like toiling away, making little like toy trains out of wooden things. And, and I always think of like, I'm the little elf in Jehudi's workshop. That's why I laugh when I say it. Um, I'm like the only elf. Anyway, uh, <laughs> like laboriously making tools. Um, but there are two levels of analysis we work with. And number one is what actually happened, like looking at the facts of what has occurred, uh, how those things have affect, did affect you and how it made you feel, what it made you think about life and yourself and the world, how that may still be what spa the space you're in today. Number two, and why would a soul co-create this as a human learning lesson? Why would souls co-create such experiences? And why for you specifically, and that's a lot of what my work is about, honoring what people feel and, valid and validating them and holding space to listen, and then, and then helping them understand the bird's eye view so they have two layers of analysis. So one part of them says, oh, I did that thing again, and wow, that got me punished, and I hate myself. And we say, okay, great, part of you hates yourself. Okay. you got to process through that and acknowledge that and validate that you have the right to feel that. Again, you don't want to act from it. That doesn't want to be your self-definition. But then level two, and why, or layer or level two, I'll go back and forth, but why would you co-create this as a learning journey? So you have two understandings at the same time. So we never, in other words, invalidate how you feel about something, no matter how dark it is, no matter how negative it might be. You know, so, you know, two images we get with the Scorpio or Plutonian archetype, the Scorpio, it's the scorpion itself, right? The stinger, uh, it can lash out when it's attacked, but that would cost it its life. Um, you hurt me so badly, I want to hurt you back, even if it costs me everything. Another image is the phoenix rises from the ashes. And the latter one, the phoenix rising from the ashes of its own destruction, is the full phrase. So that phoenix has been burned alive. And it rises up again anyway. So those two images of, I might want to... I might not know what to do with my pain, so I might want someone else to hurt because I hurt so deeply. Versus, oh my God, I just feel like I got burned alive by this thing. How can I regenerate? How can I keep going? So obviously, in the way I live and the way I practice and teach and work with people, I aim for the latter one. And I, th I talk about Pluto as a teacher saying, asking you if you're strong enough. And then saying, what I really want to know is if you believe that you're strong enough to handle difficulty. Not because you deserve difficulty, but because pain is a learning vehicle. It's part of the human experience. And souls incarnate over these millions of lifetimes, maybe more, to learn all possible uh, methods of living as a human, all possible experiences. And you can't know strength and empowerment until you know perceptions of not strength and not empowerment or weakness and disempowerment. So what happens when part of you feels validated, meaning, and there's a couple of things in here I want to add, there's nothing wrong with the content of what you feel. What you feel is human. The depth of it when it comes to Plutonian issues the content, 
and the depth. Don't judge these things. Accept and validate the reality of what you feel without shaming your feelings, without judging your feelings or their con the content or the depth. And the third part is, and don't judge how long or how attached you get, part of you may be, to some painful thing because it's not done transforming. It's not done learning through that process yet. So you don't judge the content, the depth to which you feel, which by the way, either of those can freak a person out. <laughs> Just saying it's possible in any of us to be freaked out by how deeply we feel something when it's a negative reaction against some painful thing. I'm not talking about the uh, strength of a political opinion or, you know, judging someone else's behavior. I'm talking about something major has happened to you when you have a reaction and that reaction, the depth of it, the content can be so, uh, so can be frightening. I always tell Pluto and Scorpio people, by the way, but it's also true for everybody uh, to certain de different degrees, but especially Pluto and Scorpio, part of the wounding in many lifetimes is the depth of feeling, the content, the depth, and how hard it is to unravel or move on from disempowered feelings. So don't judge what you feel, acknowledge it, give yourself the right to be human while recognizing that these Plutonian issues, we don't always talk about. We don't make space to talk about these things. Uh, truth and reconciliation uh, contexts or committees or commissions are one place where that happens. But I think they're kind of rare. I started to do a little research a couple of weeks ago thinking about this video and uh, didn't get too far into it, but I saw that there are, you know, representations all over the world of truth and reconciliation committees. And that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of um, thing that's super important to give voice to the things, to give voice so people feel acknowledged. Now, in those cases, a lot of times that's a government entity creating space for members of communities who may have had conflict or whatever, uh, or have had these Plutonian terrible things happen uh, to them by the government or by others. But what I'm working on doing is creating forms of community where people learn to go through their Plutonian issues in healthy ways so they can hold space for others in the same way, whether astrology is involved or not. So validation doesn't mean a, a free ticket or carte blanche to be destructive or to hurt others or yourself. But validation is really truly understanding the depth of your of how you're wired as a human and some experiences that you may have had or may be having during this phase of your life currently and not shaming yourself for being human and for going through something intense. So again, the Pluto Intensive Healing Webinar is the first group effort from me about creating this kind of community. Not that everybody who joins has to do this later for other people or hold space, but there's a natural um, call right now I perceive people are feeling, which is to get to the bottom of what hurts, to learn how to grow beyond the limitations that stem from these pains and these experiences and our beliefs about ourselves and the world based on our painful experiences to learn how to become empowered. There's a call for it. People are craving overcoming their limitations and getting done, becoming done and finished with what persists that's painful. These patterns that seem out of our control, but we somehow know we can change them, but how? So check out the, the Pluto Healing Intensive uh, webinar. You know, I used to do the Pluto, I used to do intensives for six people in person for four days, an immersive thing for four days. People would travel to wherever I decided to have the thing. I did six of them, two on Pluto, three on, three on Pluto, two on family, one on Chiron. Family contract was soul, family soul level contracts, understanding family issues and healing them and uh, three on Pluto. And um, I loved it. And then the pandemic came right after the Chiron intensive. 
And, um, and at that time I was doing energy work and it was tiring me. And so the pandemic gave me a kind of a break from doing those in-person events and now uh, restructuring it, opening it up to more people. And I'm really excited. Every time I work on the notes or work on uh, communications for the group or uh, I get really ex- or make notes for a video like this, I get super excited because what do you do? You have two options when it comes to what to do when you're working with painful things. You can either decide that you can't handle it, in which case one might shut down and internalize and isolate. Uh, But if you decide you're strong enough, you naturally want to help other people too. That's kind of why I'm saying creating community for people who can hold space for Plutonian issues. Uh, That's why that's where I get that because behind our wounding or personality quirks or preferences behind identity and personality, we have a connection to the level of soul consciousness that's behind personality. Like you're not talking, I'm not talking from my soul to you right now, but my consciousness is connected to my soul. And um, check out EA Fundamentals 1, the home study course for more information on that. And also the Soul's Journey 1, the book. Um, Anyway, we can choose to transform if we know that we're strong enough. And Pluto always challenges us to decide that we are strong enough. And it's almost a trick question. Like when Uranus comes around by transit and says, are you free? Part of you will say, no. And then Uranus will say, hint, hint to another part of you, you're not free. Free yourself. Same with Pluto. Pluto says, uh, <laughs> Pluto says, um, are you strong enough? And part of you says, no, I'm not here. You know, wine, wine, wine. And uh, not making fun of you, but of all of us. Uh, and Pluto whispers to another part of you, just decide you're strong. Just, just keep deciding you're strong. And then decide later that you're also strong because of this other thing. Keep deciding that you're strong enough to make it. And you will find the strength to do that. So I, uh, I love, I'm doing all that work individually with people. But again, this webinar is the first group effort outside three groups of six people before the first uh, real effort to uh, bring it to several dozen people at a time. Anyway, so check out what I'm up to at tdjacobs.com and check out the Pluto Healing Intensive webinar. Um, I don't have a cutoff date for registrations because it's possible to go into the webinar a few weeks and still take registration. So I'm just going to feel into my energy level with how many people in a group I could manage with this kind of process and exercise. But anyway, thanks for your time and energy. And I hope you have a, hope you have a good day and a good experience uh, rising from the ashes of whatever destruction has been difficult for you. Take care.